what you're reading there, son? Uh, just a fictional French love story during the time of Louis the Sixteenth. Oh. Yeah, I remember when I was your age. I lived through the French Revolution. Yeah, I lived through those hardships and violence. Believe me, I saw things I'm never gonna forget. What did you go through? It's a long story. Life went as usual. I woke up, went to work, did my everyday job, and pretty much went home, ate dinner, then slept. The rate of taxes were extreme, and I had to earn enough money to survive. I had the usual life until that one afternoon. When was it? July 13th, 1789. The streets of Paris were crowded with people. Complaints, violence, and the sound of thunder just kept roaring in my ears. Right after the French Indian War and American Revolution, France went bankrupt. There was a financial crisis. Trying to tackle this problem, King Louis attempted to raise taxes, but nobles refused to pay as he wasn't, you know, a very good leader. During the time, being a doctor saved me just enough money to afford a decent living. Prices of bread skyrocketed. People, including me, were left no choice but to steal from bakeries and shops. People would just storm into bakeries and steal bread, which caused a huge loss of money. Inequalities in society caused people to starve. The food costed a month's wages. While we were already struggling to make a living, King Louis taxed us even more. We couldn't cope with the taxes. The taxes and hardships of making a living fueled the anger of citizens of France. They started to protest. Besides King Louis' poor leadership, there were also writers from the past who gave us inspiration. The purpose of the government, after all, was to protect people's natural rights and to make sure that people were equal in society. These ideas became known throughout France. People started to gather around the center of town. Tons of men and women were arguing, screaming and cursing out loud. With all the commotion, things started to escalate. More and more people started to protest. The meeting of the Estates General was soon held. Each of the Estates, the first, the second, and third, had met. The population of the third outnumbered the first and second Estates, but her votes were only equal to them. This made us angry and we soon left and met at tennis court. On June 17, 1789, we proclaimed ourselves a legislator, the National Assembly with the right to make laws for France. Only after doing this did Louis take action. Louis locked us out of their meeting place. This did not defeat us. Instead, it made us even more resentful. We decided to meet at an indoor tennis court. We swore what became known as the Tennis Court Oath, that we would not leave this court until we had written a constitution for France. Louis finally abandoned his harsh attitude and gave each representative the, wrote, the right to vote. Louis then started to order troops to Paris and Versailles in case he needed to control people by force. We, the National Assembly, were afraid that Louis would use violence to end our meetings. On the side of the National Assembly, the people of Paris searched for weapons to arm themselves against any action Louis might take. On the 14th of July, 1789, I went with a mob of partitions to storm the Bastille, the prison which symbolized the people's oppression. At first, we tried to negotiate with the Bastille's commander for weapons. 
When things started to get out of control, we exchanged fire with the prison guards to swarm the prisons. I could see the bloodshed and the screaming. There was chaos everywhere. Suddenly, something hit me and I blacked out. So I guess you're awake. I saw you lying in a puddle of blood. I had a nasty gash on your head, so I pulled you off. Did we do it? Did we do it? I'm not sure. A lot of people died. Fatally wounded. I had to take them on in. What happened to them? Judging from the amount of people left, I think you guys took the best deal. And afterwards? They sliced off the guards' heads and um, put them on pikes and paraded them around the town. You okay? You don't look so good. No, I'm good. I'm good. That's fine. Thank you for the hospitality. No problem. When I went out, I saw the streets filled with sadness and horror. People were hurt, injured, and angry. Many people were shocked by what had happened. They feared that King Louis would punish them and thus end the revolution. I ended up marrying Martha, and we soon had children. I had a family to support. A few days later, I heard rumors that the king had hired foreign soldiers to punish those who started a revolution. As a result, a panic now known as the Great Fear swept through France. Rumors spread from village to village, and many of us believed in all sorts of crazy stories. By early August 1789, the National Assembly had eliminated all the feudal duels and services that the peasants owed the landowners. In the late of August, the National Assembly adopted the Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen. It laid out the principles of the French Revolution, which included liberty, equality, and fraternity. Writers of this declaration took some inspirational ideas from the English Bill of Rights, the American Declaration of Independence, and the writings of Enlightenment philosophers. The document stated that all men are born equal and remain equal before law. In 1791, the National Assembly finally completed the Constitution. It created a new legislative body which was known as the Legislative Assembly. Citizens gained voting rights, but only taxpaying men at least 25 years old had the right to vote. In response, the inexperienced and unwise legislative assembly declared war. France's army was definitely not ready for war. Extreme action came on August 10, 1792, when a mob marched onto the palace and slaughtered the guards. Not long after, Louis, Marie Antoinette, and the children, which were demoted to commoners, were thrown into prison. By September 1792, there were groups of radicals. This included the Mountain, who were the most radical, the Girondins, who supported constitutional monarchy, and the Plain, which originally supported the Girondins, but later switched to support the Mountain. There were also radical leaders. Each of them played an important role in the revolution. The first one, Maximilien de Robespierre, was known for his dedication to the revolution. He led the National Convention during the bloodiest times. The second one, George Danton, a violent agitator in the early days of the revolution, was very popular among the public. The third one, Jean-Paul Marat, was an advocate of violence and leader of the Sans-Culottes. A few years later, Louis was soon placed on trial. He was soon found guilty. He was then guillotined. He said, well, I thought the revolution was over there. But, oh, I was wrong. 
One day, as I returned home from work, it appeared that Martha and the children weren't there. I found a note on the table. Dear Jacques, this is it. You and me on these last words. By the time you read this letter, I will be long gone. Even though we didn't have much time together, know that I had the best time in my life with you and the children. Emily and Laurent are with me now, and they are safe. We don't know what we will face later on, but please worry no more. The children and I will be off your hands for now. You will feel like you're alone, but know this. We will always be with you forever. Martha. I couldn't endure the revolution any longer, so I fled to Austria. A few years later, in 1795, a new constitution was adopted. Voters elected a governing board called the Directory. However, it was weak, corrupt, and ineffective. It ended in um, 1799, when Napoleon seized power. After the terror and violence came to an end, I came back to France, my home. So that's basically what, exactly what happened in my lifetime.